Hello everyone, today we're gonna explain to you how does motor controller work. As you know, we have a lot of experience with them. We tried the regular controller, we tried BESC based controller on the old Ludo, and we just launched the Mac One controller, which is this one. And we're gonna explain to you why it's better and where we wanna go uh, from now on. We often call the motor controller the ESC. This is an electronic speed controller. And basically it's just receiving the battery from the motor through this connector here and dispatching it between the motors. It's also receiving the input from the throttle so it can link the battery input and output to the signal that you're sending to the throttle to have a smooth uh, response out of it. So the controller is connected to the battery and the throttle and often the displays and the light and everything. The main function of it is to receive the signal from the throttle and to receive the power from the battery and dispatch them equally between the two motors. The main difference between this controller and the one we had before is this one is able to handle both motors. You can see there's an output for the motors on each side. Usually a motor controller can handle only one motor at a time. So you have one controller from the front, one controller to the back, and you have uh, some wires linking them together to make sure that the throttle signal is being split between both of them equally and your wheel's gonna spin at the same speed. We wanted to combine those two together for two reasons. The first one, it get the cost down. It's also creating more space in the body because you can imagine instead of having two controllers like this, I can only have one, so there is more room and this is also even better for heat dissipation. The other thing you can notice is this controller looks better than the regular controller because of the box, that's the first point, a beautiful blue and a dice, and also because the wire coming out, well, they're more structured, so you have one motor and one side here, the other side here, so it's quite simple. And something you can't see on the camera, but you can feel when you touch it, is the qualities of those wires. They are what we call silicone wires, so they are much more flexible and they can withstand a lot of hemp, uh, so a lot of current going through it. So those one will never melt. And with the Mac One controller, we have even more power, more output, so we needed to upgrade all the wires. And that's why the connectors, those are the MX60, so it's, it's three wires together. Uh, and even the battery connector, we went for a XT90, so it can withstand up to 90 amp of discharge. That's the only controller I know that is like this. Usually it's a XT60, which is 60 amp. So we just went over and above to be sure that it's gonna last in time. The controller I have here, it's the first prototype of the Mac one. You can see that yeah, it's blue, it's anodized, it's reflective, but we had to change it because the manufacturing way was creating too many scratch on it. So we had to refuse too many pieces and when it was coming to our factory. Factory. So we're gonna upgrade it from anodized to now powder coat. And you can see that also the pattern on the controller change. So now the controller is meant to go like that with the fins going up to down like this, while before it was on the side like this. This pattern is gonna allow for better uh, cooling because the wind can pass between the fins compared to before it was on the wrong side. Something I didn't plan when I was designing it. And also because it's powder coated, well, I quite like the look now. And you can see this is a Mac 1 controller, the blue. And we have the orange that's going to be the Mac 2. This one's going to be on the Phantom, uh, maybe on the Ghost, I don't know. This one's going to be on the Pro, the Explore and the Light. What is the difference between the two? Internally, it's the exact same thing. We simply replace one component that allow us to go from 25 amp of discharge to 30 amp of discharge. This is a 20% gain in acceleration, torque and power handling. So you might wonder why are we wasting so much time working on a simple controller, right? The reason is really simple is the controller is gonna be what enable the rest of the scooter. So as I explained in the region video that you can go check out here, you need to have a completely integrated ecosystem in your scooter to be able to handle um, the regen, uh, the high discharge, or even the crazy new thing that we have, like the wireless uh, charger, for example, all the light, the sound, you know, it's all starting from the controller. So the controller is really the brain of the scooter. So by building a solid platform now, it's gonna allow us in the future to have something very unique and solid. Other good benefit that we have with our controller, and the first one that comes to mind is the IP rating, right? This one is IP66 minimum. You can submerge it underwater because there is a coat of epoxy inside the controller. So you can literally take this, put it underwater, uh, and maybe have the wire come out like this, and it's gonna run. The other one is the app connectivity. So again, this is the brain of the scooter. So you can imagine that to connect to the app, 
well, we have to use this controller that is connected to another PCB in the headset, but it's all starting from here. So when we develop special feature like on the Pro changing the horn sound or the light sound or changing the turn on sound, all those things pass to the controller and to be able to program them in our backend, well, we need a solid platform and this is what it allows. The last one would be the region break. So as I explained before, you need to have the right battery with the right BMS, with the right controller, with the right motor. So that's one part of it, the controller. It's able to grab all the power that is being generated by the motor when you are doing regen. It's gonna flow through the controller without burning it and then go to the battery. And not only that, it's gonna go into the battery and split it equally between all the cell with the smart BMS we have and with the connection we have with the controller. Another big benefit of this controller, it's how smart it is and being adaptable to other hardware. So what you saw with the Phantom V3 upgrade kit, for example, we were able to install a controller that didn't have any motor requirement or whatever put it inside the scooter, do a simple calibration uh, method, and it was able to read all the motors, the display, and then make everything work uh, together. Usually when you put a controller inside a scooter, it needs to be calibrated from the controller factory with the motors and the rest of the hardware, while this one can really adapt itself and completely transform how a scooter works. All the feedback we've got is incredible so far. People say it feels like a completely different scooter, and that's true, it's butter smooth. And with the app, you know, you just gain so many new functionalities that it's great that it's starting from a simple blue box like this. It's changing the hardware completely. Lastly, you can see that on all those connectors is plug and play connectors. This means you don't need to know how to solder to if you want to change your controller, you can just unplug and replug it by matching the colors, you know, it cannot get more easy than this. So that's pretty much it for a beautiful controller. Again, you can expect the same level of finish and quality throughout all our components and scooters, even if they're inside the body. So those are the things that comes to mind to why it's so important to build your own controller. And quite honestly, it's also because it just looks so cool, right? It looks beautiful. They often say that you are as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside. So that's why we've had so much time doing a beautiful inside of our scooter.